So now I'm going to talk to you about two of my patients, all right? 26-year-old, lovely young woman who's got no past medical history at all and just takes the birth control pill. She lives here in Boston. Her boyfriend lives in Northern Virginia, and every Friday after work, she gets on a bus, and she goes to Northern Virginia to spend the weekend with her boyfriend, and every Sunday night, she gets on the bus and comes back. And she's been doing this a long time, weekend after weekend. One time, she goes for 10 hours to see her fiancé, and after 24 hours on Saturday, ready to go out for dinner, she gets sudden onset of pain in the chest. She gets a little shortness of breath. It gets worse. She can't get on the bus Sunday night because she can hardly breathe. She goes to a local hospital. Her only complaint is, my chest wall hurts when I take a deep breath, and I feel a little winded. But otherwise, I'm fine. And on exam, her blood pressure is fine. The amount of oxygen in her blood is perfect. She's just got pain. She's got a blood clot on the right side of her lung, OK? So in my view, and I suspect in Dr. Ansel's view as well, we would treat somebody like this with blood thinners and follow them. But in this case, for reasons that to this day I can't explain to you, they did put her on blood thinners, but they also put in one of these filters. I don't know why. She went home on the shots of Lovenox and Warfarin, and she was sent to me to take care of her now that she lives in Boston, right? She was, had this in Northern Virginia. Someone's got to take care of her. So I see her and I say, I'm happy to take care of you, but I don't know why they put that filter in. So I call the doctor in Northern Virginia and I say, hey, why'd you put that filter? And they said, well, we thought it'd be safer. This woman had no risk of bleeding. She was totally healthy, 26 years old. Here's her, this is, a, this is an injection of contrast into the big vein in the belly. This is the filter. The tip is sticking outside the vein here. This leg is already outside the vein. And look at all of these. I mean, this is a disaster. This is her CAT scan. And look what happened when we took this out. This is actually tissue from her own body. She didn't need this filter in the first place. She's doing great, by the way. And they're married now. And she just called me last week, and she's pregnant. So now i got to deal with managing her pregnancy with all this. But now, there are ways to, uh, five minutes? OK. Um, there are ways to dissolve blood clots. We've got all these devices that can uh, dissolve blood clots. And we can get big pieces of blood clots out. Look at this. This is not like a worm sitting there. That's actually what a blood clot looks like. This is, this is big time stuff. But this is somebody who was dying. I mean, they were literally dying, and we didn't have time to use blood thinners and all this other stuff. So now I'm going to wrap it up with a final story. This is one of the saddest cases I've ever had, but it tells the story that Dr. Ansel said, and we didn't even talk beforehand. This is a 44-year-old attorney who's a big-time athlete, plays rugby, does triathletes, all that stuff. And he hurt his left foot, and it, hurt, it kept him from competing. And so he went to a foot doctor who said, you need an operation to fix the bone in your foot. So he has this foot operation done, He's given a cast, a cast that goes up to the knee, and he's only wearing it for two weeks. And at the end of two weeks, he calls the foot doctor and says, my leg feels tight in the cast. So the doctor brings him in and removes the cast, and his leg looks swollen. So he calls me and says, hey, you know, could this be a blood clot? And I say, well, send him right over. Let's figure it out. He otherwise feels completely well. So the bottom line is, this is what his leg looked like. I wouldn't say it's terribly swollen, right? Here's the bandage from the foot surgery. But he, 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 it felt uncomfortable. This is the ultrasound that Dr. Ansel showed you. The blood uh, in these veins is not flowing. These are veins in the calf only. So kind of middle of the calf on the operated leg. So he's got a blood clot. So what would you do now? Well, there are several things you could do. I offered him what I thought was the right thing to do, which would be to start blood thinners. Why would a healthy athlete who had foot surgery and a cast for only two weeks develop a blood clot? I said, you ought to be on blood thinners. That's what I told him. And he said, I don't really want to do that. I don't want to get involved with all this headache of shots and worrying about what I'm eating, and I like to compete, and I'm going to start to train again. So I don't want to do that. So I said, OK, since your blood clot's only in the calf, the risk of that breaking off and going to the lungs is so low 
that we'll just see you on a regular basis to do ultrasounds to make sure the clot's not growing. So that's what we did. Two days later, he comes in for his ultrasound, and it shows the blood clot's exactly in the same place that it was two days before. And in fact, his leg's feeling a little better. So I said, OK, four days from now, we'll do another ultrasound. The day before his other ultrasound, he wakes up in the middle of the night with pain in his chest, otherwise feeling fine. And his leg is now totally perfect. This is his blood clot. So he developed the blood clot from this vein in the calf to the lungs. Very unusual. So I think to myself, something is not right here. This was not the foot surgery. Because a healthy young athlete should not get a blood clot to the lungs from a little vein clot in the calf. Unbelievable. What else? This. This guy's never smoked a day in his life. This was cancer. 44 years old. So remember what Dr. Ansel said. If you get a blood clot for no reason, you can't explain it. You've got to think that this might be a marker of something bad to come. So the take home message, DVT and PE, these blood clots in the veins and legs can be prevented. Know what your risks are and you treat those risks. Know the symptoms of a blood clot like we talked about. There are lots of exciting treatments that are available. Ask your doctor. It's always a pleasure to be here. Thanks for the National Blood Clot Alliance for the invitation. Thank you so much, Dr. Jeff. So we'll take two very short questions. Up in the back, I saw the first hand. Hi, we're live tweeting, and I have a question from the internet. Um, it was really probably for Dr. Ansel, but I'll ask if you know the answer. Um, I tweeted about the risks for Leiden 5, and somebody asked if we know the risks for Factor 2. Uh, for I passing don't, down to children. I, I don't actually know the risks okay. for Factor that's 2. Okay, I'll, I'll tell him. Sorry. I don't mean to put, be the... That's case. okay. The I'm, there's the plenty of things I don't know the answers to. Just ask my kids. Yes, uh, I have a question. I have a recurrence of a blood clot, but uh, there, there was no reason explaining why I had the, uh, the clot because the only thing that I sit a lot. And I've been uh, in um, warfare for at least, I would say, two years. What would you suggest? So just like Dr. Ansel, you and I just met. It's not like we've been working behind the scenes here. Um, I can't give you good medical advice, but I would tell you this, a couple of basic rules. All things being equal, if you have a new blood clot after a first one and no one can figure out why, that's one of those situations where I think you're on blood thinners for a long time. Now, I would tell you that 10 years ago, we didn't even know what factor V Leiden was, right? We had never heard about prothrombin gene mutation. Look what we've learned. We're going to continue to learn about new risk factors for blood clotting. So it might very well be that what you have might turn up over the course of the next several years. But I would say you're on blood thinners for a longer period of time, and you and your doctor have to be very closely joined at the hip to make sure that you're medically healthy going forward so that nothing else turns up. 